Welcome to the Rugby Bricks 10 Pillars of Goal Kicking organisational session. So the reason why this is such an important process is as soon as we've got our details down, then we've got the ability to change our thinking. We've got the ability to, to test things out and trial things. When we have a conversation with a coach or anyone who wants to talk to us about our goal kicking, we've got such a good understanding of what we do, how we do it, why we do it, and some of the key reasons behind all of those details. So today, I really encourage you, whenever I say pause the video, take the time to go away, type down those details, write them down. That's where we wanna to get to is have a, a rock solid bulletproof kicking technique based off the 10 pillars of goal kicking that you can always come back to. Before we get started, we do have the 10 pillar of goal kicking journal. This isn't a sell, but what I'm saying is this book here has got your session plans. Uh, it's got the 10 pillars in it. After every 50 kicking sessions, it's got a 10 pillar page where you can update it and, and just see where you're at with your goal kicking technique. Again, once you've got something established, it's really easy to tweak and make changes and you understand your why behind your kicking technique. There's more details on this on the website. There's a full video showing all the different pages and what's inside this, this journal. But uh, if you really are serious about your kicking, you want to grab a journal, I would highly recommend grabbing one from the website. One thing that I really enjoy about the RB Vortex Tees is you can personalize how you place the ball. So for me, I like quite an upright ball on the mid-cut kicking tee, and I like to roll my seams in slightly. So just rolling those seams in slightly. And the kicking tee really allows me to do that every time. So however I want to sit this ball, I can go to the back of my mark. If I see I need to change it, I can change it and the tee allows me to do that. Your goal kicking sessions don't need to be hard. They don't need to be frustrating because of your ball strike. So however you strike the ball well is how you should be setting your ball up on your tee. Let's just use an example. If you're using a low kicking tee where you're constantly scuffing the ground and getting ugly ball flights, then you put it on something like the mid cut and you're kicking the ball well every you know, 10 out of 10 kicks, at least you're striking the ball well. I would lean towards using a mid cut and enjoying your session and making that more consistent. On the flip side, if you're hating a high tee, you're undercutting, you're getting heaps of backspin, you might have had a, a soccer or a football upbringing, you love that low to the ground strike, um, Go with that, enjoy your kicking sessions and have a tee that you are consistent with. We're all different, we've all got different body shapes, legs um, and ways that we do it. You wanna enjoy your kicking sessions and be consistent. What I wanna talk about is when I take this first step, if I'm, if I'm really tense and I really wanna smack this ball, I quite often jump, get really excited in this first step. If I take too big a step here, it means once I get into the ball, my foot's gonna to land too close to the ball, I'm gonna be really cramped and not have that big range of extension, that then I can use my full technique to get through the rugby ball. Stay slow, trust my timing. Pillar number four is your approach. So many unique and iconic approaches that we've seen. I think about Dan Carter, Johnny Wilkinson, Percy Montgomery, um, a couple of really unique. Mornay Stain was a favorite for me, how simple it was. There's a few really cool kickers at the moment. I love Owen Farrell and how simple he is, Johnny Sexton. Um, there's some really quality kickers out there. Dan Carter was, was extremely unique with the, the footwork that he did before his kick. So your approach is the steps back from the ball and the steps out to the side. Now how you get to your spot, I'm not too concerned. It just has to be consistent. So when you're writing down your detail, don't just say four steps back, three to the left. I want you to talk about uh, the energy of your step, how quickly that you're taking your step, whether they're relaxed, whether they're big, whether they're mediums, whether they're slow and composed. Because if you get excited, and you're at the start of the game, you're all pumped up, you've had some caffeine, you're fired up, and you take big excited steps back, too fast, too quick, um, you're gonna be so far away from the ball than what you usually are at a relaxed training session, and that's really inconsistent. Same with the steps out to, your, to the side to making sure that you're taking them a unique way. If you've got a unique sort of twist or thing you're doing with your body, have a think about also when you're at the back of the mark, what position you're in, where are your feet angled, what are your, your hips and your knees and your chest and your head, what, where are they aiming? When I think about momentum, it's winning this half metre pre-ball and then winning this half metre post-ball. So generally the first part of the kick's really easy to do. We're coming in strong, 
good body position and getting our plant foot in a really good position so we've got good momentum at the time of impact we really want to be nice and tall and over the midline of the ball that's going to help with our momentum as well rather than being behind the ball so we've won this half meter it's really important and why i like the hop technique that once we've made impact that we're actually hopping through and winning this half meter with our body getting through there as well now how you win momentum post impact with the ball comes down to your technique there's three ways there's three different techniques from what i've seen where kickers use they use the hop technique oh and feral they use the foot down techniques of johnny sexton or they use the hurdle style which sometimes we see long range kicker like geordie barrett using where they they hit the ball they launch themselves off the ground it's like an american football kickoff style where they fully commit to the kick and launch off the ground thanks so much for getting through this please reach out i'd love to help you now that you've got through this process if you've got any further questions um, but yeah well done on getting through this well done on becoming really passionate i think sometimes we need to give ourselves a green light to become really obsessed with something and i don't regret any of the sessions and how um, obsessed i was with goal kicking because i can always look back and be extremely proud of the effort that i put into the skill and, and into the task and um, you learn a lot about yourself with goal kicking uh, a lot of late nights a lot of sessions by yourself and for me i still go for kicks now even though i'm not playing because i just love the skill it's almost like my golf i find it so relaxing and 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 almost like meditation so enjoy that i'd love to help please ask your questions contact us at, at rugby bricks and uh yeah we can really help you with your rugby bricks journey and goal kicking but thanks so much for your support please sing out we'll talk soon